So today we have some very unfortunate news. We think that Gary's B-58 blew, but it gets worse. If you're new to the channel, this F-3340 was previously owned by Chris Marzano, our previous operations manager, who tragically passed away just 90 days ago. Now to continue the build, Gary, one of our guys here, has purchased the car and is carrying the torch and he's going to continue what Chris started. But unfortunately, we have a huge problem in just 60 days. This car is the main feature car in our car show with over 2,000 people coming. And we're 99% sure it has a blown motor. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to come up with some kind of plan to get Gary up in the road and make sure that everything is in tip-top shape for the car show and it's my only car <laughs> <laughs> So there's that too. <laughs> now to get you up to speed, here's what happened Friday. It started uh, misfiring, went into limp mode, sounded terrible, and then uh, started blowing out white smoke everywhere. Gary's walking over to it and uh, we're gonna put it on my trailer, take it back and uh, see what's going on. All right, it's all loaded up. There you go, let's take it back to the stable and see what's going on. So he's got some misfires in cylinder one, so we're gonna pull this off and pull the plug and look in there and see what the heck is going on with this thing. I'm documenting our findings. We're gonna test the coolant. It doesn't look oily, so that's good. Moment of truth. That's disgusting. That's oily. That's really oily. Yeah. Kind of hot. <laughs> I was about to say. I cleaned it off real nice. You just pop back in; it should be fine. Yeah. Oh, you can see oil on the piston. Do you have your flashlight? It's a highly specialized tool we're using here for this. <laughs> it looks wet. Mm -hmm. All right. While Gary is on the phone with his wife, I'm gonna get the Mini Cooper out for him which is gonna be his loaner car. This is very strange, I don't normally record on my uh, on my iPhone, but here it is, in all its glory. The Mini Cooper Roadster S. Yeah, baby. All right, so it's been like an hour. <laughs> we have this back together, and essentially what we're going to need to do is we're gonna to need to get it in the shop Everything we're looking at online, when it talks about oil on top of the piston, is just not really good. So we're probably, we're gonna, we bought a scope. We're gonna scope it. We're gonna do some diagnostics, see what is up with this thing. And then see really if we can figure anything out by taking the valve cover off and that kind of stuff, or if we need to actually pull the engine and take it apart. And then it comes, if we have to go there, it comes out to do we build it or do we just swap it with one that works. So today is actually day number two and we are going to try to get to the bottom of what happened to this B58. Now we did call the dealer and they did not have good news for us. They think that there's some kind of ring failure based on some of the symptoms that we told them, but we bought a new scope. We wanna scope it, we wanna drain the oil, see if there's metal in there and go through the whole process. So to do that, I need to pull out my 335. Then we gotta push Gary's 340 onto the lift, put it up in the air and then we'll go from there. So the other day when we pulled the car back, we trailered it in, we started to pull some of the plugs and cylinder one was giving us errors for misfires and shutting down the injector and all that kind of stuff. When we pulled the plug out, it had oil on it. And when we just took our iPhone light and looked in, you can see that there's oil all over the top of the piston. So what BMW is telling me is most likely the rings are shot and it's shooting oil up through there. So we bought this ghetto scope on Amazon. <laughs> I'm gonna tell it like it is, and we're just gonna drop this in and hopefully get a better view from what our iPhone flashlight was showing us. Now, we drastically cleaned these off um, because we had them out the other day. 
So you're like, oh, it's not too bad. No, it was really bad. I'll be the uh, monitor holder. You can be the scoper. Here we are. Oh, look at all that oil. That's disgusting. Wow. Well, that, that's the dumbest feature ever. I went to hit the light and it's got a light on the back. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Are you using it as a flashlight at night? Yeah, see how wet that is? Mm -hmm. hmm. Now your piston's pretty far up. We should um, try and push it forward. Yeah, let's let's hand crank the motor and put it down. Okay. Cause I, I don't know, I felt like I saw something weird. Mm -hmm. Hold on, just keep it steady for a second. Not there. I felt like I saw part of a ring. I don't know if I really did or not. I'm not even sure which way is up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to tell from our beautiful scanner, but that looks a little rough around the uh, the edge there. Start up. Wait, right there. Go back. Right there. See the broken piece? Yeah, you are missing a little piece of your valve. Mm, couple that, pieces. That piece was extra, though. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Put this here or that there. Well, I think that piece of metal goes there. <laughs> <laughs> I, that doesn't look good. Oh yeah. Oh no. Yeah, like that's part of the valve. Well, I guess we should probably drain the oil and take a magnet to it and see if we can. Uh... Find the rest of the valve. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go look for the valve in your oil pan? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right, we're going to drain the oil in this pan so that we can kind of see what the heck is going on and uh, see how much metal is in as well. <laughs> see if we could pull any metal out of it. Probably aluminum. Like, there's, there's definitely metal in here. Look right here. That's metal. That's metal, that's metal, that's metal. You see it? Yeah. That, look, that thing right there, that's metal. Oh, we gotta pull the filter too and see what's all in there. Not too bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. What the heck? I've never seen this before in a car. <laughs> Gary, you had a duck in your car? What in the world? This is Pond. <laughs> James Pond. <laughs> Look at the size of that piece of metal that came out. <laughs> oh my God. Oh yeah, look, you can see it running. Look at all of it. You can see it shimmering. Holy oh, cow, look wow. at all this over here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Look at all that. I've never seen any metal like that. Look at that chunk. Oh my gosh, it's like free willy. <laughs> That's not good. Yeah, look at all shimmering right here. It's all collecting. Look at that piece. That, oh my gosh. Gary, I'm sorry to say this, but I think you have motor failure. Um, so they said, it has 82,000 miles. It's $8,000. It'll take a week to get here. We're looking for something with a little bit lower mileage. Okay. All right, no problem. Thanks. Bye. Um, 82,000 miles is about 8,000 bucks plus shipping. And it's gonna take about a week. Um, the other thing too, like when you're, when you're motor shopping, they want a core, a lot of them do, which doesn't make sense if you're a junkyard, like, you know the motor's junk, so why do you want more? Um, but we want to get that motor built, so um, I have a look of what I'm gonna call. No, it needs to be X drive. Because I think we don't really want to mess with the pan if we don't have to. Sixty-five thousand miles, sixty-two hundred bucks. No core. Yes, we'll take it. How? Well, how soon? Tomorrow? I guess we can wait till tomorrow. <laughs> All right, you mean to, do you mean to pay when I pick it up? Okay. All right, cool. 
All right, we'll see you there in the Raptor. All right, see. All right, well, that was significantly better. <laughs> that was like 6,200 bucks for 65,000 mile engine. Um, it's a 2017 340 um, X Drive. So with, with the difference in, as far as we know, the difference in the oil pans, um, the axles, your front axles go actually go through the um, the oil pan, so it's a little bit different setup. Um, you can, from what I understand, you can replace the pickup and also just the pan and call it a day. Um, just in case, this isn't something we normally do. Um, Gary's never pulled a B58. I've never pulled a B58. Zach's never pulled a B58. Um, even if you've watched us build like John's car or my F80 when we did a motor swap, um, we had our master technician here with us. A um, little bit of a challenge. We're gonna try to do this ourselves. Um, I don't know if it's gonna work out all that well. <laughs> I hope it does, but he said he can have the motor tomorrow, so um, we're just gonna go from there. So I guess today's plan is gonna be to see how far we can get to pull that out. And then from there, oh, we gotta get our trans jack. So we have a transmission jack, our friend Cliff's borrowing it. So we'll have to go over to his shop at some point um, to get that. I did speak with my buddy who is a master tech for BMW, and he recommended that we pull the trans out just like we did with the F80. Um, now last time he did like 90% of it and I was just kind of there watching and uh, just lending a hand when and where possible. So we are going to be doing all of the heavy lifting, literally. So let's start to disassemble the engine bay. We're going to put the car up in the air. We do have to take the axles out because like I said, the axles go through the oil pan. So we got to pull the wheels off, pull the axles out. Oh, this is going to be a big project. <laughs> so with that, let's get started. We're going to do all this. We're going to drop the exhaust, drop some pans down disconnect drive shaft and really just see how far we can get we have like two and a half hours left for today so let's see how far we can get and then we'll just have to continue in two days from now because we're kind of booked up tomorrow so here we go look at all this oil look oh my gosh the puddle dude All right, so we just pulled the charge pipe off um, and look down here. Look at all that oil that just came out of the turbo. That, my friends, is a bad day. So if you look, that whole thing is all jacked up. Wow. And it's all over the place. That just poured right out of the turbo. That was disgusting. All right, well, that's not good. I mean, that, that is a lot of oil, like a lot, a lot of oil. How are you feeling, Gary? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Gary, Gary just threw up in his mouth a little bit. <laughs> that is a lot of oil. What's this O-ring? Are you serious? I'm pretty serious. <laughs> I thought you were joking. No, I... They just found it! Oh no. Let me see. That was in the underbody? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's where all the oil came from. Oh, there we Whoa. go. <laughs> Green line down. All right. Well, that wasn't planned. What? Hello? <laughs> is There's that... some drippy liquid. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly. It's too... It, it feels more like coolant. Yeah. Well, yeah. the good thing is your tires have tread. Yeah, right? Ready for this? Boom. We're up for the win. So what we're doing now is we are just pulling out the axles because they go into your oil pan area. So you wanna make sure that when you're lifting the engine out, you're not like pulling the wheels with it. So I just pop that out with a crowbar and a big hammer. And uh, I'm gonna see how little we can disassemble here before uh, pulling it out completely. 
All right, let's do that on the other side. And uh, so at this point, the car is rear wheel drive. It has no front axles or uh, half shafts, so. <laughs> Ta -da. That's how we get so big. <laughs> that was fantastic. I see what you did there. <laughs> Try shining in there. More oil. Oh yeah. It's not good. All right, so where we're at right now, we have the axles out. We have the fan out. We have way too much oil on this thing. Uh, there's oil flowing out of the throttle body. It's flowing out of the turbo. It's a glorious hot mess. Um, so right now we are going to pull the intake manifold just to make sure that nothing bad happens. And once we've done that, everything pretty much should be free. We just need to make sure that like our AC condenser lines and all are over. We're gonna have to pull this belt off and uh, Drop sure the transmission. Just, yeah, drop the transmission. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to do that before we actually pull the motor. But um, once this is off, we'll be able to get, get to the fuel lines. We'll take the fuel lines out, and yeah, we're moving along. And uh, all this like diff fluid everywhere smells really bad. It's, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye manifold. Day number seven. No, Zach. <laughs> Day two and a half. But it hasn't been like a straight shot. Yeah. Check out this cool little pallet they made. Wow. Yeah, I wish our forklift was charged. <laughs> well, look, we got a free bolt. Oh, nice. This is a very special bolt. It's a timing bolt. Oh, there it is. 2,000 pounds. Oh, okay. <laughs> we got this gear. Yeah. Ready? So the best, if you grab there and there, and then I'll stabilize it. Let's go right on the epoxy floor. So here you can see an example of what it should look like. Let me see if I give you any extra light. Look at that shine. <laughs> Holy cow. It's got polished pistons. Gary, can we just go stick it in cylinder one on your car now? Oh, yeah, sure. Hey, this is Gary's. <laughs> so what's really cool about this Weira um, ratchet, it has these like micro clicks. So let me get here. So you only have to turn it a very little bit. So like when you're doing this, normally on a regular ratchet, you're not doing anything, but with this, it still spins. So it makes everything, so even if you're going just like this, everything's turning. Oh, it's slow, but it's turning. So now what the plan is, now that we have the engine out, um, and that actually wasn't that bad. Um, we leaked all of the fluid out of the torque converter because <laughs> <laughs> what you guys need to know is learning from our mistakes, you really should take the torque converter off before you pull the trans out, which is bolted in the back. So you gotta pull the starter and then take out all these bolts. Kind of pain in the butt. Um, so yeah, so we should have done that in a little bit different order, but at the end of the day, it's not really a big deal. Um, we just have to fill it with some, some fluid. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, other than that, everything went really good. Um, I am glad we took the, uh, intake manifold off. Definitely made it easier to access some of the things and lines that are under it. So yeah, so basically now what we need to do 
We need to go over this engine and the other one and make sure that it has all of the appropriate parts. You can see we have a Dorch fuel pump on here. We're going to want to put that on the other motor. Um, we are going to keep the stock turbo on there for now. And yeah, we just got to really just go through this whole mess of wiring and different components and just make sure that everything is still there. Um, one of the things that we did is we left the air conditioning condenser in the car. And by doing that, we didn't have to um, let the coolant out or the Freon or whatever it is these days out of the system um, because it's very toxic and all that and it's a pain in the butt to refill. So we left that as is and that was definitely the right call for this. Things are going really good on Gary's car. We got the engine in, we have transmission in, we have the starter back in, we have all kinds of stuff done. Uh, put the axles back in. So basically all of the difficult stuff is pretty much done, which is really good. So now what we need to do is we have the transfer case, we have some diff fluid, we have transmission fluid, we have engine oil. So we stocked up on all, all things liquid molly. So we have this huge thing of Top Tech 1800 which is for the um, automatic transmission. And then check this out, ready? I may have gone a little bit overboard, but we got all of this ready to rock. We even have boxes that we didn't have space for. So we are going to be filling everything up. We have some Zero W20 6600 from Liquid Molly. We're going to be running Ceratech to make sure that he's not gonna have any issues. Yeah, we have pretty much <laughs> We have way more product from Liquid Molly than we could ever fit on our little shelf. So we're gonna to need to get a couple more shelves. But basically that is the point where we're at right now. We're going to be fluiding the heck out of this car right now. That's a technical term if you didn't know. And then from there, we're gonna put it down, button everything else down up top. And then, yeah, we have the intake manifold, the exhaust, um, the turbo is already on. So I think there's just a lot. We, we already did most of the hard stuff. so. We only have a couple hours today and then we have a couple hours tomorrow. So hopefully by tomorrow we have everything buttoned up. And Gary, you can drive your car again. Yes, thank God. <laughs> He's, Gary's been driving the Mini Cooper. So he is uh, you know, definitely looking forward to driving his own car again. As you guys expect, you wanna make sure that you run a BMW approved oil for your car. So we are running Top Tech 6600 from Liquid Molly. And as you can see, it is a zero W20, which is what BMW recommends in the B58. So I actually found it in this really cool 20 liter container and I bought this extra nozzle. And we have all this stuff on our site if you guys need some for your car. What's really cool about these big containers is if you work on your car a lot or you have a couple cars like we may, it makes it super convenient. So you just put the nozzle on and then turn it sideways. So if you have a tool shelf or something like this, just get another container, put it in there, which we do anyway. And then it is super convenient, super neat, and it's got a little spout, so you don't have to worry about spilling it. Now, in addition to the oil, we are going to be adding Ceratec, which basically ceramic coats the inside of your engine, giving it extra, extra protection. Now, being that this is Gary's second engine, sorry, Gary, we wanna make sure that this one is as protected as possible. You can use this with every oil change, and I started using it on the F80 and all of our BMW. So we're gonna make sure that we throw this in as well. So with that, let me grab my oil jug. I'm gonna fill it up with oil. We're gonna dump it in the car and then throw in some Ceratec. Just to reduce my uh, risk of spilling here, I'm just gonna add my Ceratec right on in with the oil. It's like a protein shake. Car. 
All right, so to give you guys an update, it's alive. So it's really good. Uh, we didn't get a bum motor because we did buy it used. So um, you just never know what kind of car it came out of. So, so far it seems to be doing pretty good. The idle seems really nice. Um, he flashed it with a, uh, just an OTS map just so we can get this thing going because he does now have the stock turbo on it um, that actually came with the engine. So yeah, we're just going to let it idle a little bit, let it warm up. Um, it is preventing him from um, revving very far, so he's going to scan for codes, maybe see if there's something we missed plugging in. Um, everything's really smooth, everything is idling, so I'm not sure what it would be. But um, yeah, that's pretty much where we're at. That part about things being unplugged we may have forgotten to plug in the um the throttle body which is you put the intake manifold on and then you have to like reach around and put it on so that was kind of out of sight and then the um the wastegate that one also came unplugged i guess at some point um with the used engine it came with the wiring harness and we used the wiring harness that came with it that being said, some of the connections were not in the best of shape. Um, so some of them are going to need a little help from a little zip tie, um, just to make sure that they don't fall off. They should be okay, but a lot of them have that secondary locking clip and a lot of them are just, they're just missing. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. You excited, Gary? I'm absolutely excited. Gary's absolutely excited. take it easy and uh, Gary's gonna give it some uh, some gentleness here yeah. for a little while while everything gets settled in make sure everything's good and uh, yeah then we'll uh, then it'll start ripping on it but so far so good it sounds good it feels good and it works it works all right, so as you can see, Gary's car is successfully running and we are effectively done with Gary's video and on to the next. So once again, that's Gary, I'm Brian, that's Zach. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, check us out at keysmotorsports.com and come to the car show July 2nd because it's going to be a great event and we want to see you there. So thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.